common question I get is what type of site do you like to use? Do you like a longer site? Do you like a shorter site? Do you want a single pin, multi-pin? And honestly, my answer really varies depending on the setup and the situation. Now, for this particular series, what we're doing is we're taking our hunting bow and we're making it into a hybrid setup, meaning we're taking that sight, which I had on my bow, which was a five pin sight that had the ability to move down to cover longer distances. We're taking that sight and we're actually gonna make it into a sight that allows us to have a little bit more precision when it comes to target archery. I really enjoy shooting the Total Archery Challenge events. So I like to have a single pin. I like to have a slightly smaller pin. So in those situations, I'm able to have a little bit more finite aiming on those targets. And especially since during the off season, I'm a very big, big advocate of practicing at longer distances. I really feel like learning to shoot at those longer distances and setting yourself up to where you can be the most accurate at those longer distances starts to really magnify not only your accuracies, but more importantly, it magnifies your mistakes. So what type of site you choose is gonna give you a lot of options on how big that target is, how clear that target is, or how much of that target you're covering. So just to give you a quick rundown here, I have several models and I'll show you the differences of all of them. But first I wanna start with the very first sight that I had on my target bows dating back two decades ago was a target archery sight just like this one here that had all of my distances on the inside and then I had a smaller aperture, a smaller ring that really focused on just the object that I was aiming at, not necessarily in the entire scene. I also had a magnified lens that was on the outside. And with this magnified lens, I had a small dot. And the reason I liked this dot was because it allowed me to see in the same in a lot of different lighting situations and it also had very good contrast on the types of targets that I was shooting for target archery. Now when it comes to hunting having a dot like that really isn't going to be practical. I really enjoy having a fiber optic pin and my personal preference is greens and reds tend to show up the best for me. Green is my preferred so on my hunting site, I have green, red, green, red, green. So the two pins that I would use the most would be my top pin or my bottom pin, which even if I'm shooting past that 60 yards, I'm gonna have to move that site to all of those other yardages and still use that bottom pin. So if you have a fixed pin site like this one here, that gives you the ability to move that site to different distances, you really have the options of both worlds. And in a hunting situation, this is 100% preferred for me because having a single pin that I have to worry about moving a lot, for me and the types of situations that I have, get to be a little bit frustrating having to move that pin just a little bit too much or not being able to move the pin at all because the situation's happening right now and you have to know your setup so freaking good that you need to know exactly how high or how low to aim because the animal's moved. Whereas with fixed pins in a hunting situation, I can simply say, okay, well that animal's you know somewhere between 30 to 35 yards put my 30 at the top of the vitals, my 40 is gonna be at the bottom of the vitals and I'm kind of just covering everything there in between, which when you have that single pin, gets a little bit harder. However, in situations where I'm hunting in a blind, situations where I'm hunting, for example, hogs on a feeder, or if I'm hunting turkeys over decoys, having those single pin sights that I can move a little bit easier or be more at the ready to do so 
is super convenient and super accurate, but in whitetail situations, rutting elk situations, spot and stalk situations where you're going down, covering ground, popping up and you might need to make your shot, having multiple pins is my preference. So you have the options of single pins or multiple pins. The other options you have is the ability to have a sight that has a dovetail extension that comes out further from the bow or moves it closer. Now my personal preference is I like to be somewhere in between. Even back when I had a sight like this that had the ability for a longer extension, I was always somewhere right in the middle. I don't really like it too far out in front because although it does give you a slightly smaller aiming dot at the end of that sight, which you're looking at, it also starts to make your scale of your sight get bigger and bigger and bigger. So in other words, right here on this site, you can see I've got 20 yards to 110 yards. And let's just say it's, it's that big right there. If I were to extend this site out further to the end and lock it down, in order to cover that same distance, this scale would probably be four to five yards bigger to cover those same distances because the further you put it away from yourself, the more you open up that scale. Likewise, the more you bring it into yourself, the tighter that scale is going to get and the closer your pins can get together, which again, in a hunting situation, gives you the ability to put multiple pins on that target so that if you're not 100% sure of the distance, you're going to have some wiggle room. But the further that's going to be out, the wider that gap will be and the more likely you are to have one pin that's over the back of the animal and one pin that's under the belly of the animal. So I like to keep my sight close. Now for my particular hybrid, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to take my style of sight, which is a spot hog fast eddy. I do have the five pin set on there, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this front housing that has the five pins and I'm going to replace it with two pins just like this. So these are two 19,000 fibers. So they're pretty small. They're going to be good at longer distances. Also, this aperture is a little bit smaller as well, which is going to lead me to be able to shoot a slightly smaller peep sight, which we'll talk about in a future episode. And that's also going to increase accuracy. Now, the only other thing that you can do, depending on what you like to see for your apparatus, is you can on this particular site, you can actually change these apparatuses and either have a three ring or go down to a single ring, which also gives you a little bit more clearance under that scope so that you can get a few more yards at that longer range. So this is what I'm gonna switch to for my hybrid setup. I'm gonna be able to still move that pin for every single yard. This is what I'm going to practice with throughout the year. When I go to these TAC events, I'm going to be able to dial this site to the specific yardage that I want. And for me personally, I'm not going to shoot magnification because again, I really like a hybrid. I'm not competing. I'm not there for a tournament score or for a tournament prize. So I'm just looking to have something that still in my mind lets me relate to hunting, but doesn't necessarily give me this target archery style apparatus. Now, if you are wanting to try target archery and shoot indoor spots, if you're wanting to shoot outdoor field, I would highly recommend you getting some of the scope dots and also get a lens, even if it is a low power and put these on here because these dots are great for having that same contrast all the time, regardless of the lighting situation. Whereas a fiber sometimes gives you a bit of a flare, sometimes gets a little bit hard to aim on those spots. So this is my setup. I'll show you exactly what I'm gonna do to put my particular site together and get it leveled out for my tack bow.
Taking your multi-pin sight and changing it over to that double pin is going to be super easy. All you've got to do is remove these front two screws right here that actually hold down the third axis adjustment. It's a pretty nice system for easy third axis adjustment, but it takes the entire front head off. So now you have a multi-pin hunting head that you can easily remove and then replace it with this two pin housing, which is awesome for exactly what we're gonna do. And that's gonna be more long range shooting, more finite adjustment, gonna have a, a little bit better sight picture because there's not gonna be as much clutter in there as well. And personally, I feel like having that single pin, you are gonna learn a lot throughout this downtime from hunting season and being able to know what type of what type of accuracy your bow gets with an adjustment of one yard or two yards and what that one or two yards does. So what I'm gonna do, I've gone ahead and mounted this on and I've done my best to where when I'm looking at this, I'm trying to make sure that this scope right here is square or at a 90 degrees with this frame that's mounting on my bow. So I'm just gonna get that close for right now and right there, it looks pretty darn close. I'm also gonna just make sure my, when this is on here, my scope housing is vertical. You don't want this scope housing turned down. You don't want it turned up. You really wanna make sure that this scope housing is running parallel with that vertical bar. So I'm gonna take one look here from the side. That looks awesome. It looks pretty close to a 90. So for there, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick sight adjustment. Now I do have some other videos out on how to properly level your bow sight, which I'd recommend you take a look at if you're not familiar with this. For right now, I'm just gonna take a Hamski leveler and just take a quick look here. Second axis is awesome. I'm just gonna tip it up to take a look at where this third axis is laying. And it's a little bit off, so when I tip this up, even though this level that's on my main sight frame is square to that sight frame, my bubble is running off to the left, pretty much telling me that that scope is angling like this. So as I point up, my bubble is going to run to the left. As I point it down, my bubble would run to the right and it would cause me to shoot one way uphill, one way downhill. So I'm going to just take one more look at this quick and check definitely off a little bit so again i'm a little bit off like this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tighten down that side that's closest so i'm going to tighten down that side which i had some room to give i'm also going to check the other side that's snug and then now i'm going to check this one more time quick Put that on the inside. Second axis is good. Pointing up in the air. Third axis is also good. So just like that, I've got this thing set up with a nice two pin sight. It's gonna give me some accuracy throughout the summer, throughout the tax. And I'm gonna go ahead and just mount this on the bow that we're working on so that we know exactly where we're at throughout this series. Where we're at through these builds. And we are done with this second step of picking our site, mounting our site.